Hi, this is Ogio with 4KShooters.net and this is my review of the Teradek Bolt 500LT SDI. Recently I had a chance to be a second camera assistant on a, a micro-budget feature film shot on the C300 Mark II. One of the main reasons why we went with the Bolt 500LT was its compact size and also the fact that it can transmit a wireless video signal uh, up to 500 feet. This was plenty of range for what we needed. We had to move fast. It was a uh, sort of a semi-documentary kind of style uh, shoot. Everything's handheld, so we really needed something compact that uh, can allow us to move fast. So anyway, what's included in the system? Basically, you get uh, a, a transmitter, a receiver. You have two little antennas that, that are mounted on the transmitter. You have an SDI cable included for the transmitter, an SDI cable for the receiver. You also have uh, a, a limo to detap power cable for each. And Teradek have also included a, a small baby pin connector so you can mount the, uh, let's say the receiver uh, with, with a monitor on a C-stand. Looking at the receiver, you can see it's quite small. Uh, this thing has uh, plenty of mounting options, including a quarter 20 uh, on the bottom. Uh, a couple of M3 screws, and there's also uh, on the side an Airy 3.8 uh, pin lock, so you can mount it to an Airy camera. Of course, you can use this with any other camera, such as a RED, or a Sony, a Panasonic. So the right side of the transmitter has a power switch, a USB port, which is used for uh, firmware updates, and below the USB port, uh, you can uh, see it's a small recessed port. That's the reset button. You use uh, a, like a, a paper clip or, or something very thin and sharp. Uh, basically, when you press that uh, gently, the transmitter goes into sort of discovery mode and it can be picked up uh, by the receiver so the pairing process can, uh, can actually start. Going over to the other side, uh, again, the interface is quite simple. You get four LED indicators. Uh, the top one, it's uh, your power indicator, which means that there's power going to the uh, transmitter. Uh, beneath it is the camera indicator. Uh, the one below that, it's the link. Uh, LED and the triangle, which is the fourth one, it uh, usually indicates a fault uh, with the transmitter. It's the one you really don't want to have uh, going on and off. Uh, below that is your uh, 3G SDI in and out, and of course a two-pin limo input for power. Just like on the transmitter, the receiver is quite simple. You have a 3G SDI output, two-pin limo uh, on one side, and on the same side you have a small power LED indicator. So flipping over to the other side of the receiver, things are quite simple. You have a USB port. You also have a menu button, which uh, it's worth to note that you have to have the receiver connected to a monitor, uh, an SDI monitor, which unfortunately I don't have one here to show you. So you can actually see the small menu that pops up when you actually pair the uh, items. Uh, on the top, you have uh, obviously an on and off switch, and you have a couple of indicators indicating uh, camera signal and also transmission signal. In terms of powering uh, the uh, receiver or the transmitter, uh, those are really not power hungry at all. They'll take anything from 7 to 17 volts, so you can power from uh, a regular uh, V-mount battery, from a, a battery plate, as long as you have a D-tap. Um, uh, I use the Core SWX Powerbase Edge, which is a really cool battery. It has a couple of uh, D-taps. We also used uh, some IDX batteries. One alternative way of powering the receiver uh, instead of using a V-mount or gold-mount battery, is to use the Blind Spot Gear Power Junkie. This was my uh, plan B in case we ran out of V-mount batteries, uh, you know, in case the camera used them all or we, you know, we had to recharge or for whatever reason, you know, one or two of them failed. I really wanted to make sure that I can uh, feed power to the receiver. And the Power Junkie is really compact. Uh, like I said, it uses Sony MPF batteries. We had plenty of those. You can easily Velcro it to the side of the receiver or you can uh, you know, put it on a hot shoe via an adapter. It's a really cool device. Now it does use a special cable, uh, which I bought separately from eBay. I think it cost me about 30 pounds. Um, this cable uh, has the, um, it's terminated properly for the uh, two pin limo that's on the side of the receiver and on the other side it has a barrel connector which goes into the um, uh, power junkie. This is a really cool uh, little unit. Um, I've done posts on it uh, on the website before. Highly recommend it uh, for you guys to check it out. They're really inexpensive. I think in the UK they sell from authorized dealers for about 50 pounds if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so go ahead and check them out. I'll put a link below in the description uh, in case you guys uh, want to check them out and you um, want to get one of them. Mounting the transmitter to the C300 Mark II was really easy. Uh, the top handle of the camera is really beefy, so I uh, chose to use a really short magic arm to mount it uh, to one of the sides of the handle. In order to connect the transmitter to the camera, uh, this happens via 3G SDI cable. So I used the supplied SDI cable to go from the uh, SDI monitoring output of the camera 
into the 3G SDI input of the transmitter. The next step is to get power to the transmitter and this is done by the supply DTAP Telemo cable. In my case I use the Hawkwoods uh, DTAP distribution box. The antennas are very adjustable and that made it very easy for us to uh, kind of flip the transmitter to the side when we had to go in and out of cars. It's recommended that the antennas stay up vertical uh, for best transmission. Pairing the receiver and the transmitter is a very straightforward process. Now in this video I do apologize I don't have the SDI monitor that we actually used on the shoot. I actually don't have access to any SDI monitor at this point. However I will show you how to pair the Bolt LT500 uh, transmitter to the small HD focus bolt. This was the monitor that our second, actually our first AC, our focus puller used to pull focus from. Pairing is a very straightforward process. After you turn the camera on and you supply power to the transmitter, the top two LEDs will light up. After that, we need to go into the small HD focus bolt menu. Uh, the input uh, menu, uh, just be sure that you're on wireless and not on HDMI input. Uh, then into the wireless menu, which is the kind of second uh, from the top down make sure that wireless is enabled. In there you also have regional settings. This is very important. Be sure that both of them are uh, on the same, um, uh, the same region. Now in this case I had already paired the two so I'm gonna go ahead and unpair them so I can pair them again and show you. When you see this screen that means that the uh, receiver is looking for the transmitter and in order to make the transmitter discoverable what we need to do is use a paper clip to uh, kind of push the uh, reset uh, button on the transmitter. So once the uh, transmitter goes green you will have a little button that says pair you push it and then uh, wait a few more seconds and you're good to go. It will tell you that the pairing is successful. You can go back uh, and actually see that you have a feed from the camera. Also on the transmitter side you can see that the uh, link uh, the cloud looking uh, LED is now solid blue which means that we have wireless transmission and that's all there is to it it's really simple once you get set up you're good to go this is a super simple system to use even for someone like me who's very inexperienced uh, uh, with wireless systems the Bolt 500 uh, LT uh, made it super simple it worked every day um, we didn't have any issues with uh, drop signal wind interference anything like this Yes, this is a little bit more budget system. It's kind of a no frills, bare bone system, but it, it's really good at what it does. Just literally transmit the signal from my camera to a monitor, to actually two monitors in our case, uh, with no problems. As long as we were within line of sight and we weren't going through three walls, we really had no issues with the signal. And I'm super grateful to Teradek for uh, uh, allowing me to review this product for three weeks uh, on a feature film shoot. Um, super grateful and I highly recommend it. Uh, there's links to uh, the full blog uh, write-up uh, below on 4kshooters.net. If you guys want to check it out, please do so. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this has been uh, useful. Until the next one, have a good day.